Hello again, guys. Evolutionary trends that we are going to see in plants are similar to the evolutionary trends that we saw in both the invertebrate and vertebrate animals. These were adaptations that allow the organisms to live with less and less available water. We're going to see the same thing in plants. The very, very first plants, as you learned in the last couple of sections, was algae. Those are strictly water plants. The first land plants we see are bryophytes, and those are quickly followed by ferns in evolutionary times. If you look all around us here in Houston, since our climate tends to be humid much of the year, we see a lot of mosses and ferns. So let's take a look at these two groups, and next time you're out at a park or a golf course, look around and see if you can spot any bryophytes or ferns. First up are the bryophytes. So get your papers ready. Remember, wide right, skinny left, and let the fun begin. Most people don't notice bryophytes around them, but if you stop and take some time to look a bit more carefully, you'll discover that they are quite common. Bryophytes are low-growing, they're usually found in damp, shady places, and they are non-vascular. That means they do not have vascular tissue, they don't have xylem and phloem. That also means that they must acquire water and nutrients through the process of osmosis and diffusion. So they have to have a constant source of water. Bryophyte plants are small, less than an inch high most of the time and they take in water through specialized cells called rhizoids. Because they take up water and nutrients, rhizoids act like roots, but they're single cells, very long single cells. And because they do not have vascular tissue, guess how water moves around in the plant? If you said osmosis, you're right, you get a gold, scar to, a gold star for today. Remember, osmosis is the diffusion of water across a cell membrane. So water moves through the cells by osmosis, nutrients move through the cell by diffusion. As we said in the first set of notes, haploid and diploid generations alternate in most plants, but in bryophytes, both stages are present and identifiable at the same time, as you can see in this diagram. Starting at the far left in this diagram, a water drop carries the gamete from the male plant to the female plant. These are the gametophytes, the plants. Upon fertilization, the sporophyte stage begins to grow from the gametophyte. This is the diploid stage. Meiosis produces haploid spores. Wind carries the spores out and around and they fall to the wet ground and grow into more gametophytes starting the cycle all over again. So we see the alternate generations present at the same time. The sporophyte on the top which has the spore producing pod and the gametophyte on the bottom. You are probably thinking right now that that's all there is to know about bi bryophytes, but you would be not right. There's more. Wait, there is? Oh my gosh. There are three main types of bryophytes, and I bet you're just dying to know what they are. So I am not going to waste any more of your time. First, the most common are the mosses. You find them on the ground, on the sides of trees, on rocks, just about any shady, moist place. Sometimes there's lots of it, and it feels much like carpet. Another type of bryophyte is the liverwort. These are less common, and they have this unusual umbrella shape to their sporophyte stage. Lastly is a bryophyte called hornworts. These are so named because of the little horns that you see here that are the sporophyte stage. Those little devils. Mosses are used by humans quite a bit as well, especially those into gardening. Sphagnum moss is very plentiful, 
and we discovered that when we dry it out and bag it, it's extremely helpful in keeping moisture in the soil. It also helps lower the pH of the soil, making it more acidic. This is important if you're growing certain plants, like azaleas, that like acidic soil. While a rolling stone gathers no moss, and these guys on the right definitely don't gather moss, let's take a look at what you should know from this section. First of all, you should be able to tell me about rhizoids. How is it like a root? How is it different? What's its function? Where is it located? All kinds of good stuff like that. Secondly, you should be able to explain why mosses and other bryophytes are always found in shady, damp areas. And lastly, what's unusual about the reproductive cycle of mosses? Okay. We have the alternation of generations that's common in all plants, but what's unusual about mosses? So remember, come up with six questions, three level one, two level two, one level three, and your summary, and bring your notes to class.